Okay, we are live, we are recording, focus mode is on, you should be good to go. Uh, welcome everybody. Uh, while we're going through the welcomes and the introductions, if you would like to code along with me today, please do consider downloading the uh, plugin example code today, which we will be going through, going over in a few seconds. Uh, I have posted this in the chat. And then also, if you haven't already, please consider downloading Postman app. Um, you don't have to download it. I will just be giving you a brief introduction into how it works and what it does. Um, but if you'd like to sort of test out the API with me when we get to that portion of the workshop, you can start downloading and installing that. Um, I have actually uninstalled Postman from my from my machine, so I will be going through the process of installing it myself. Uh, so you can install it along with me. Um, so some quick introductions. While, while you're doing that as well, if you'd like to, please also just say hi in the chat. Uh, and let us know where you're joining us from, uh, where you are in the world. Um, my name is Jonathan. I am from Cape Town in South Africa. I am an ex-developer to code instructor, um, and I'm a sponsored contributor at Automatic, so that means I am paid to do online workshops and create tutorials and work with the training team to create what we learn WordPress content. And if you want to find me online, the easiest place to find me would be my website, which is jonathanbossinger.com. It has links to my various social media platforms and my GitHub repositories and my email address and all those things. So that's where you can find me online. Okay, um, today we're going to be continuing with our, our sort of dive into the WordPress REST API, the WP REST API. Uh, last week we had a session on uh, creating posts, uh, list, sorry, list, uh, yeah, creating posts, deleting posts, uh, and we had a brief introduction to, to Postman. Uh, we use the Backbone JS client. Uh, and today we're going to continue. We're going to learn how to update posts. We're going to learn how to work with custom fields on posts. Uh, and then we're also going to look at authentication very briefly. Um, authentication in the REST API is quite a deep topic to dive into in one workshop. So I'm going to cover the kind of options available. And we'll just talk about one that's available to WordPress core. Um, and that's that's the goal for today. At least. If we run out of time, we might not do the authentication part, and then I might push that out to a future session. But we do have an hour and a half, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, hi there from, you're going to have to excuse me if I pronounce that correctly, Snow Homish. Uh, and I guess WA is Washington State. Um, I don't know the, the state abbreviations, the US state abbreviations, so I hope I've got that correct. Welcome. Um, Nice to have you joining us. Uh, okay. As always, before we get going, a few announcements. Uh, I have already done all the welcomes. Um, I don't have a co-host with me today purely because I forgot to find one. Uh, it was a bit of a busy week today. And a couple of folks in the training team reached out last week to offer to co-host, and I just didn't get a chance to reach out in time. So I'm on my own today. Uh, thank you, Washington USA. Excellent. Um, so please bear with me if, if I get a bit stuck uh, managing multiple things. Um, as always, you are welcome to ask questions. You're also you're welcome to either post questions in the chat or unmute to ask questions if you don't want to post them in the chat. Uh, the only thing that I do ask is if your question doesn't specifically relate to whatever we're uh, speaking about or doing or coding at the time, please keep those for the pauses that I allow for uh, for, for sort of ancillary questions. Um, then, if you're, as I mentioned earlier, if you're going to code along with me, that is the plugin zip that you can download. I'm going to paste this in the chat again for folks who joined after that initial announcement. Uh, and then you can also download uh, the version of Postman for your for your operating system. So I'll pop that in the chat there and get that installed and set up. Um, and as always, if I'm going too fast, please do let me know. Uh, I tend to keep an eye on the time and try to squeeze a lot in this hour and a half. So sometimes I might speed up a bit. Uh, I might code a bit too fast and you need to slow down and see the code. So please do shut if anything is not clear or if I'm going too fast. Um, this record, this, this session is being recorded and will be posted to WordPress.tv afterwards during the course of the day tomorrow. And then I will share the link to that video in the comments for the meetup event. Uh, there's also more WordPress-focused content on learn.wordpress.org. So all of these meetings, all of these workshops are linked on that site, all of the tutorials that we create, all of the courses, all of the lesson plans. So you can get everything on there. Um, all of these workshops that I'm running this year, I'm also turning into tutorials. 
So he'll be able to watch the hour and a half or however long it is recording for the workshop. But then in a few weeks' time, maybe a month's time, there'll still be a shorter condensed sort of 10-minute tutorial version. So you'll be able to catch that later. And then follow-up questions. I pasted the wrong link there. So let me just update that one. And I'll have to update my slides. Um, but for follow-up questions, so in other words, if you are watching this later, or if there's anything that you think of after the session, you are welcome to post those questions as a comment on the Learn WordPress issue. Uh, this is basically just the issue that I used uh, in the WordPress Learn project, or the Learn WordPress project to kind of manage my workshop for the week. Uh, so you'll see all my notes there that I create for myself and the various links that I used to prepare my slides. So if there's any questions that we either don't get to in the session or something that you think about afterwards, you're welcome to post them there and I'll do my best to either answer them there or if there's something that is coming up in a future session or might be a good topic for a future session I will use them and, and go forward from there so please do feel free to use that that's if you have anything you want to ask me about the session afterwards if you're watching this afterwards or watching the recording that's going to be the easiest way to get hold of me all right um our learning outcomes today we're going to as I mentioned we're going to be looking at updating posts using the WordPress REST API we're going to be looking at creating and updating post custom fields, also known as post meta using the WordPress REST API. We're then going to authenticate with the REST API using an application password. And to do this, we're going to be using the Postman API testing tool uh, because I can't, well, I can replicate the environment in my dashboard by logging out and all of that. Um, but it's easier if we just use the Postman app to show you how that all works. Um, so that's the, those are the four goals for today. Uh, the object, the objectives that we're going to achieve to, to achieve those goals, or sorry, the objectives that we're going to take to achieve those goals. First, we're going to set up and review the example plugin code and just refresh ourselves what have been done so far. That's also for folks that are new to this so they can see what's going on. Uh, then we're going to add the functionality to updated post. We're going to very quickly review custom posts and what they do and how they work if you, if you haven't dealt with them before. Uh, and then we're going to add functionality to up, add or update custom posts when we add or update posts themselves. We're just going to add one custom post or one meta post meta field, whatever you know that as. Uh, then I'm going to give you a quick introduction to application passwords and how that works and, and the history of that. And then we're going to use Postman to test the application password and test a post request to the REST API. And I'm going to show you how Postman works and how you can use it to test your API endpoints. All right. Any questions on all of those goals and objectives that we have for today? Uh, while I while I refresh my thread quickly, otherwise we will move on. The one thing I forgot to mention when we uh, did the announcements was that while we are in focus mode, which means I can see you, but you can't see each other, you are welcome to enable your video if you would like to. Uh, if you would like me to see you, I don't mind if you don't. I don't mind if I, if I have a bunch of just names. But if you feel like you want to enable the tool, you're welcome to. Um, okay, let's do some code. Um, so today is a very uh, code-heavy session. We don't have a lot of theory today. Um, if this is your first time uh, learning about the WordPress REST API, what I do recommend that you do, maybe after the session, is go to WordPress.tv um, and then search for Let's Code because there's a tag on WordPress TV which which groups all of my uh, Let's Code videos together, all my Let's Code workshops. You see there, Let's Code series, there it is. Um, and you can then see all of the Let's Code videos. And if you go to the newest videos, you will see that the, the most, the two most recent ones are the ones about the WordPress REST API. So the first one we did on the 13th of January is using the WordPress REST API workshop. Go and check that one out. And then last week's one, which was interacting with uh, the REST API, which is where we created posts and deleted posts. So if anything today is new to you and you're finding it confusing, I recommend going back and watching those two workshops and then watching the recording this one, excuse me, and, and things should become clearer. Okay. So the code that we've been working on is this Learn REST API plugin. Uh, I shared the link with you in the chat. I've got it installed and active on my WordPress site. Um, there's one small change. If you've been following along the, the last two sessions, uh, I originally originally had the menu item just as a top level menu. Uh, in my testing last week, I actually discovered that there was, I was causing a bug. Uh, I was causing an error message in doing that. So I updated that code and I'll show you that code in a second, that it adds it to the tools menu, uh, top level menu, 
and it's there called Learn REST API. So if you have added the plugin, overwritten the one you were using maybe last week or the week before, and you're not finding that menu item, go to Tools and then go to WP Learn REST API. Um, once you've done that, there you will see the load post section. So it's just a very simple admin dashboard page. You've got a load post button, which uses the REST API to query the post from the database. Uh, and it currently just gets the ID and the title. Uh, this is slightly different from last week. I don't think we added the ID last week, I can't remember, uh, but I'll show you that code in a second. And then there's a clear posts button, which just clears that text area. Then below that, we have an add post button, oh, sorry, an add post area. I should maybe put some borders around these so they're a little bit more uh, separate. But here we can add a new post and give it a post title uh, and some content. I'm just gonna go post one, two, three, one. And then you can click add and that will add the post using the REST API. And then it refreshes the, the post list. Uh, so there we can see post ID, post title one has been added with an ID of 153. I haven't included the content because the content could be quite big. But if you go and, and have a look at your posts, you'll see if you've done it, you'll see that it's added some content there. Um, you might notice that it's added it as a classic block if you're using the classic editor because it's it's posted in the raw data. So if you want blocks, you need to add that block code. But for our purposes, we're just going to be working with, with raw code, raw content. And then there's a delete post uh, form. And if we take an ID, let's say this one is ID 153, and we pop it in the ID field and we say delete, it will then delete that post via the REST API and it gives us a message to say post deleted, refresh the page and confirm that yes, indeed, that post has been deleted. Um, and all of this is possible using the WordPress REST API, using the Backbone JS client, which connects to the REST API, and forms the, the, the relevant functions. And because I'm doing this in the dashboard, I'm already an authenticated user. So I can just use the client in my, in my JavaScript code. I don't have to worry about authenticating because it uses the cookie that is stored in your browser when you log into your WordPress dashboard. Um, okay, let's take a quick review at the code. Uh, so this is what the code is. I'm gonna start with the PHP file. So the PHP file you can recognize because it has a PHP opening tag at the top. It has the plugin header. Um, then here is the code to add the submenu. Um, and the, the bug that I was having was I was adding menu page and I wasn't specifying a position number. It was causing me all kinds of issues. So I, I realized it should actually be a submenu page. So I've changed it to a submenu page. That's the code that handles that. Um, and then this is the, so in the add submenu page function, there is a callback function that you need to specify, which is the function that basically generates all the content for that page. So this is that function, the WP Learn REST Render Admin Page function, and it essentially just outputs some HTML. Uh, and you'll see here is the, the div that handles the load posts and clear posts area with the text area. Here is the code for adding a post. So it's just a form with some input fields and text area um, for the title, the content, and the button. And then the delete post is again another form with an input for the ID and a button to delete. So it's fairly straightforward. And then at the bottom, I just have the, the usual end queuing of the JavaScript. Uh, if you've worked with plugins or themes before, this will be very uh, familiar to you. So it's hooking into the NQ scripts, the admin NQ scripts action hook, setting up the callback function to NQ our, our script. I'm then doing the screen, get current screen. And then if the screen ID is, is not equal to the ID of my screen, so this is something that, that WordPress builds up because of where I have the page set up based on um, the slug over here. Um, so what I'm basically doing is if, if, if this code is installed, this plugin file will always be run every time the dashboard is executed. And I don't want to register the JavaScript anywhere else in the dashboard, I just want it on my page. So I use the screen, get current screen, and then checking the screen ID check. And if it's not my page, I just uh, return back to regular execution which means this doesn't then load. If it is that screen, then it loads my JavaScript file. It just means that the rest of the dashboard is not loading that file, which is unnecessary. Um, and I am loading the WP Learn REST API JS file, uh, which is in the same location as the PHP file. That's how this works. And I'm requiring it to use the WP API dependency, which is the backbone JS client, which allows me to access the, the REST API endpoints. Uh, and I'm using time as the version so that if I refresh the page, it busts the cache and, and refreshes the JavaScript, which is a very handy developer tool. Uh, you should always ship your register scripts with an actual version number. So in this case, 
I think my version number is 0 0.0.3. So if, if I was ever ready to ship this code to production, I would simply remove time and add 0 0.0.3 as a string. Uh, and I'm using true because I want it to be included in the footer. Um, so that's also, if you've done plugins or themes before, that's probably going to look very familiar to you. Um, so that's all of the PHP code. On the JavaScript side, it's this uh, WP Learn REST API JavaScript file. I've basically created a bunch of functions to handle some common functionality. So there is a clear fields function, which takes the learn posts text area, the post title, post content, the post ID, and, and clears them out. Um, there is a load post function, which is what gets triggered when the load post button gets clicked. And that uh, clears the fields and then creates a new all post collection using the WP API object, which is available because we've told uh, WordPress to use it uh, when we enqueue the JavaScript over here. Um, and then, sorry, I don't like the way. God, there we go. Better. Right, two tabs. I hate having it in one tab. Um, so that basically creates an empty collection of posts. And then I fetch the posts, um, and there is some there is some filtering that I'm doing. So I'm saying include certain IDs um, and includes just the fields in the title. I'm actually you can actually if you've got this code on your side, this is a fact. This include shouldn't be here. So you can take out this line here if you would like to. Um, I was I was playing with something and that shouldn't have got shipped, so I apologize. But in the data object, I just want the fields global parameter, um, which, which essentially specifies that only the ID and title fields will be returned uh, by, by the request. So when the request is made, only return me the ID and the title fields. Um, I just reformatted these now to make them look a little bit cleaner on my screen. It doesn't matter if you don't do the same. And then once the fetch happens, that, that returns a promise. So when the promise gets returned, I need to use the done function uh, to then say, get all the posts into this posts uh, variable here. And then I'm looping through the posts. Here I am setting up the text area based on getting the element by ID. And then I loop through the posts. And then I append the post ID, a comma, and the post title and then a new line character to the text area. So that's what, when the load post button gets clicked, that's all the code that handles all of that. In the submit post function, it's basically just getting the post title and post content values and popping them into variables. Then it's creating a new post model, a new API model of type post. So it knows it needs to insert it into the post table. And I'm passing it the title, which is the title variable, the content, which is the content variable, and the status of publish. Um, this title and content, I could call it something else, but these um, properties on the post object, I need to specify as title and content because that's what the schema requires, which we discussed, I think, in last week's session. Um, and then I can call post, like I called post or post fetch. When I'm saving a post, I can say post save to, to push that data to the REST API. And then again, I use the done, the done function with a callback. And I, basically, when you, when you post data to an, an API endpoint, it's going to return the, the saved post. So then I can do something with that post if I want to. I'm not doing something here, but I alert and I just say post is saved, clear the fields, and then reload the post. Um, and then the delete function is doing a similar thing, getting the ID value, creating a post that this time I'm passing in the ID. So it'll know to delete that post based on the ID. And then it uses the destroy function of the post model. Uh, and then again, the done function, post deleted, clear fields, low post. So that's some, some common functionality that I'm using again and again. And then right at the bottom, I just have all of the buttons that I'm using. So I'm creating a variable for each button based on its ID. If the button exists on the page, it's just to check in case something goes wrong, the button gets removed or whatever. Then I add an event listener on the click event. And based on what things are happening, I call one of the functions. So when the clear post button is clicked, I call the clear fields post. When load post button is clicked, I call load posts. When submit post button is clicked, I call submit post. And when delete post button is clicked, I call delete post. Um, and I like to separate my functionality like that. If you remember the very first session we did, we were all coding this inside of these events and checks and things. And I kind of separated it out because it makes it easy. For example, when you're say submitting a post to then call clear fields and load posts again every time to kind of make it work um, and make things happen. So, so that's what we're dealing with there. Okay, I'm gonna take a pause there. If there's any questions around anything we've just covered, um, anything you're not sure of, please do let me know um, and, and have a look. And okay, Sergio says on Windows, which branch are you currently using from the GitHub repo? That's a good question, Sergio. So if you're if you're downloading the code 
If you're not going to download the zip file and install it on your local machine and you're using get to clone the repository, uh, you would need to currently switch to the release 003 branch. So I'm going to just paste that in the in the chat, uh, release 003. So Joe, I'm going to assume you know how to do that, uh, checking out of the, of the branch yourself. So I'm not going to uh, instruct you on how to do that. If we're working off the 003 branch, um, and if we have a look, you'll see um, here is that code. It's the submenu page. Uh, it's all the same code. And then the JavaScript file probably still has the bug. Uh, yes, there it is. <laughs> There's the includes. It shouldn't be there. I should have cleaned that out. But the rest of the code is all the same. OK, great. OK, everybody seems to be good to go. Uh, thank you, Sergio, for that question. Um, I think we can move on. OK, so let's have a look at our outcomes for today. We've, we've, we've checked that. I need to figure out how to do check boxes in my slides. I can check items off as I go through. Um, but now we want to add functionality to update a post. And the cool thing about the Backbone JS client, I'm not going to go to the documentation for this one, but you use the same um, save. Uh, where is that? There we go. You use the same save function to update a post as you do to create one. The only difference is you pass in the ID in the same way that you pass in the ID for an edit. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by underneath in the learn rest API.js file underneath the submit post function. Uh, I'm going to just hang on a second. Um, just checking my notes here. I'm going to start by creating a uh, new function and I'm going to call it update post. And I'm just going to pop that there so it's ready to rock and roll. Um, once I've done that, I'm then going to go over to my, you know, some folks waiting to join. So let me just allow them in. Uh, I'm then going to need to add some form to my PHP file. So I'm going to switch back to the PHP file. And I'm going to scroll up to here where all the HTML is. And I'm just going to copy the add post form uh, because the only real change is the, excuse me, the IDs for the fields and adding an ID, ID field. Um, this is where I get confused because I'm going to be using, and hopefully this doesn't confuse you, but I'm going to be using the term fields, meaning multiple different things. So there's going to be form fields, and fields in the database. And then I'm going to be talking about IDs. I'm going to talk about the post ID, which is an ID field in the database. And then I'm going to be talking about uh, HTML attribute IDs. So I hope you bear with me if you, if you get stuck in there, shot. Um, but I'm going to copy out all of this add post code. So it's from the, the style, from the div above the add post h2 all the way to the closing div after the form there. Um, and this is another reason why I like to leave some white space between my divs in these sessions so it's easy to see where things are. And I'm going to add some more white space and I'm going to pop that code in there. So now I've got add post at the top here, and then I've got add post copied at the bottom here. And I'm going to simply just start by making some small changes. So it's going to go from add post update post in that header. And then I'm going to just go WP learn and I'm going to go hyphen update post title. So I'm just adding in hyphen update after the WP learn part on all of these uh, fields. So WP learn update post title. Uh, that can stay the same, that can stay the same. WP learn update post content, that can stay the same. WP learn update post content, that all can stay the same. The button itself, I'm going to make WP learn update post for obvious reasons, and the value I'm going to make update for obvious reasons. Um, so I'm going to leave this on screen if you're coding along. And then the only other thing I need to do is I need to add an additional field for the ID so that we can post the ID we can get the ID at least and post it in the request. So I'm going to copy the post title field to do that. And I'm going to just pop it above the post title. Uh, and then it'll be WP learn update post ID and post ID. And then it's an input, it's type text, WP learn update post ID. And I'll change the placeholder to ID. So it's very simple and straightforward. Um, just adding a new form to that page. I'm going to copy up this code if you, if you would like to grab it from me. Uh, if you if you need to, to copy paste, so that is in the chat right now. I will leave it on screen for a few seconds. Um, the other thing I want to mention is it's always a good idea if you have labels to to make sure that your label for attributes matches your fields ID attribute. Uh, that is for I believe screen readers and accessibility issues. So when the screen reader is reading the label, it knows it belongs to that ID. Uh, so I always try and, and do that in my in my forms. Okay, so we've got the form there. 
Um, if you're still coding the form, don't stress. I will allow time to, to wrap up later, but I want to start on the, on the JavaScript part side of things. Um, and it's going to be very simple to when we did the, the submission. We're going to capture the fields. We're going to create the post uh, model. Uh, and then we're going to hit, hit save and done. So we can effectively, if we switch back to the JavaScript file, we can effectively take pretty much all of the submit post code and we can reuse it. Now we could start getting clever and we could uh, do something like um, if the ID field uh, is there and has a value, then include the ID and use that in the submit post. We could do that. And that might not be a bad idea because then we're not repeating our code. But for the purposes of today's session, I want to keep things a little bit simpler. So I'm just going to duplicate the submit code into my update code. So there we go. Um, the title and content stays the same. The addition we need to make here is the ID. So we'll go const ID and we'll say uh, document get element by ID. And then it will be, I think it's WP learn post ID. So there we go, and value. And then we need to pass that into the into the object when we create the post. So here is the object. I'm just going to um, format these out a little bit so we can see the object starts. So this is the the JSON or the JavaScript object. You can tell that by the use of the curly braces uh, that we're passing to the post model. And the only addition we need to do there is we need to add the ID property and pass in the ID constant and I can make sure that has a comma because that's what a JSON object needs. And then we can do the same post save done function because that's the same action that happens. The only difference we need to worry about here is maybe say post updated. And then we can leave clear fields and we can leave load, load posts because we like that, that the fact that it works. Uh, the only other addition we might need to do, and I just thought about this now, is we might want to, oh, there's the post ID already, I've already included it. Uh, that probably shouldn't have been there, but uh, we're going to want to clear out that. Wait, hang on. No, these are the original posts. So what we might need to clear out is these new fields, um, which I haven't updated because I'm getting the post ID, uh, not the learn update post ID, which is the one I need for my form. Uh, so let's rather do that. So in the update post function, we need to make sure we're getting the right ID fields. So it's WP learn update post ID. It's WP learn update post title uh, and it's WP learn update post content. So there it is there. Um, let me copy this out into the chat in case anybody needs it on their side. Um, just goes to show you how quickly you can copy when you copy code, make sure you check everything. So really what I should also be doing in that clear fields is I should be clearing out these fields. Now again what I could do is I could do something like apply a class to all the fields and then just do a document get I think it's get by selector or something, and then you pass in the class, and then you could say value equals zero, and it'd be one line of code. That would be a lot cleaner and smoother, I agree. Uh, I'm just going to uh, do this, just so that it's a little bit more verbose and a little bit more explicit as to what we're doing. Um, so it'll be value equals an empty string. So we're just gonna add those to, to that field. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. Um, but uh, I, I want to do it for today's session. So it clears out those fields so we can add a new one without deleting them. So we're deleting the post text area, the post title, post content, the post ID for the deletion form, and now the update fields as well. Um, so that's all good there. Okay. Let me copy out this clear fields function as well in case anybody needs that. And then I'm going to pause here. Uh, I will pause on the update post function if anybody needs to catch up. Uh, if anybody is coding along, otherwise, if you're happy for me to move on, give me a all set or a thumbs up or an okay or anything like that in the chat, and I will move on. Or if you have questions, uh, now is a great time to ask those questions as well. All right, I don't see anybody slowing me down, so I'm going to assume it's okay to move on. And so that should be it, this should work now. I should be able to create a post and then update that post using the new code. So let's see if that does indeed work. So if I hop on over to my screen and I refresh, because obviously I've made some changes to the JavaScript code, 
load the post, that also works. Clear the post, good, that still works. So let's just reload, there we go. So let's add a new post and call it new post one. And I'm just going to pop in some content, new post one content, and let's hit add. And that has saved the post. And there it is, 155 new post one. So now if I copy out the ID and pop that into the field, and then let's say updated post one, and then let's say updated post one content. Uh, and just to verify this, what I want to do is I just want to have a look at the post currently in its current status. So if I go into new post one, there it is, it's using the classic block, new post one content, that is all the data. Um, and if I now hit update, this should now update the post. So let's see if that works. That didn't work. So I've got a bug in my code somewhere, so let's switch over to the console. Uh, so I'm switching on my developer tools to see why that's not working. Uh, let's do a quick refresh and load the post again. Believe it or not, I do love it when these things break because then we can see where I've gone wrong um, and we can, we can figure it out together. So updated post one and no. Sorry, folks, I, I struggle with my uh, keyboard combinations. Updated post one. And update post one content. And let's hit update. Oh, yes, I know why this is not working. We wrote the function to update the post, but we didn't register the event happening. <laughs> so that's the downside about having all these all the separation of code is that it's all well and good. I've got the post updated, but nothing is triggering this function. Um, so if I scroll down to the bottom here, let's pop this in between the submit and the delete post. And we can effectively use exactly the same code as we've used here. Again, I could get clever and I could we factor this to be like a general submit post and then depending on which button it's clicked and all various other things, but I'm going to keep it simple today. So it's going to be the update post button, document get element by IMWP learn update post. If the submit button is valid, uh, then add an event listener to it. And then we want to run the update post function when it is clicked. Uh, let me copy this out into the chat as well in case anybody needs that. So this should now work. Let's do a check. Switch it back and refresh. And I like to leave my console open when I'm working with JavaScript code because if there's an error, then we'll see it immediately. Uh, so let's do a load post. So it was 155. So let's go 155, updated post one, updated post content one. And let's hit update. And there we go. The post has been updated. There are no errors. So that's all good. And let's do a check on the refresh. Yes, there it is. 155 updated post one. Let's refresh the actual post itself, the ID. You can see there is ID 155. It should now be updated post content one. Yay, that worked. <laughs> okay. So updating a post using the REST API and the Mac.js client is as easy as adding a post. Um, you simply create the post model, you pass in the fields as we did creating. Uh, the only difference is you pass in the ID so that it knows to update that ID. So if you pass in, if you pass in an ID to a, a, a post ID that doesn't exist, I think it'll throw you an error and say this post doesn't exist, it's going to try and do an update. Uh, so the backbone uh, client will check, oh, you're passing an ID, this needs to be an update and make an update request. And then I think it'll throw you an error. Um, but otherwise, you can pass in the same uh, fields as you did for previous posts. So title, content, date, GMT, all of those fields we discussed in the schema in, in last week's session. And then it will make a request to the REST API and update that post for you. Okay, we're going to take another break if there are any questions at this point in time. Uh, and then we're going to move on. Okay, so we've got somebody who's got a bug since load post is not working. I'm on the branch you mentioned. When you say load post is not working, uh, is it the load post button is not working or it's not loading the post when you when you update the post? Nothing loads, I can add a post file. Okay. Um, when you, can you open your developer tools and see if there are any uh, errors that are logged when you click the load post button? So anything in the console?
Okay, so no, so there's no reason. So the other thing it could be, uh, I don't know if you saw this, you might have missed it in the very beginning of the session. In the uh, code, I, I left a bug in inadvertently. Uh, so do me a favor and please check at the top of your JavaScript file in the load post function, check the data object if it has an includes um, global parameter and remove that. Because what that's going to do is only return uh, posts with ID 16, 17, and 18. And if you don't have those post IDs, it's not going to return anything. So it, what it should be, let me show you in, in my code, it should just be uh, all posts fetch, open a new object, and then data and the object fields ID type, and that's all that should be in there. If you can check that for me, um, I'll share the load post function with you if you want to take a look on your site, but that should fix that problem. Now, that was a small bug that I left in the code. I do apologize. You'll just have to forgive me. Your your username on Zoom is just users. I don't know what to refer to you as, so I'll just call you user for now. <laughs> oh, it's Sergio. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I didn't see that. Uh, okay, there we go. Sorry, it's difficult. As I say, I don't have a car today, so it's, I'm struggling to follow things. Sergio, is it fixed now? If you remove the the include part. Enough to access what you value. Um, won't you do me a favor, Sergio? Won't you copy your entire JavaScript, the contents of your JavaScript file out, and paste them in the chat? Uh, we had, I think it was Mark last week, had similar issues. So let's let's do some live debugging. So if you can copy your entire JavaScript code out and paste that into the chat for me, which you've currently got, and then I'll pop it in on my side and I'll see I'll see what's going on. I need to find a better way to manage that when, when things go wrong uh, to help for us. Okay, so just pasted his code. So let me grab this quickly and have a look. Now I get to fight with uh, the Zoom meeting chat screen. And let me copy this. And paste it here. Okay, and then let me see what I get on my side. Okay, load posts is working. Um, so it might be a PHP or an HTML issue. Won't you copy the contents of your PHP file out as well for me, so I can see what that looks like? I'm gonna I'm gonna add some posts and update some posts on this side. Post two. Two and two That seems to be working fine. Okay, you grab your HP code. Um, sorry, I find the, the Zoom chat to be not so conducive to sharing code. I'm going to need to look into a better way of doing it. Uh, the official code. Yes. Oh, you see, I end up copying the wrong thing. It's rather frustrating. Let me try that again. There we go. There we go. Okay. Okay. So content. Okay, it could be here because you've got WP update submit post as the ID for the button. Uh, if you can change that to WP update post for me, um, and then we test that, that should fix things. Okay. I'm also getting an error. Did I? Go back to the dashboard. Okay, for some. Okay, it looks like there's more more issues on the, on the GitHub repo than I thought. So I'm going to have to fix those. Uh, okay, it should be using this learn rest submenu. So let me just switch back here. Now right? oh, this is using the old add submenu. So that also needs to be changed. So let's do that. So make sure that your your top admin page code looks like this. That was from the, the 03 release, the very first set of PHP code. And then make sure in your update form that your button ID is WP update post, uh, not submit update. And then that should get things working. Um, so I'm gonna go back to the admin. 
go to tools, learn reset API. Yeah, there we go. Let's do load posts. Okay, there we go. Every single error. Cannot set properties of null at clear fields. Here we go. Load posts on line 12. Okay. Uh, Learn post, post title, post content, post ID, update post ID, update post ID, update post ID, update so that's the error. That's on line six. So line six is the learn update post ID field. Oh, here we go. Okay, so your, your, um, your IDs should be, you can either change your ID to WP hyphen learn update post, uh, or you can change it in the JavaScript. I prefer to do it like this. There's multiple ways to do it, but to keep us all in check, the easiest way will, will be to make it WP, uh, WP learn update post content um, so that it matches the JavaScript code. So let me know how you're going with that, Sergio. So it's WP learn and then update post ID, WP learn update post title, learn update post title. WP learn, and I leave out the hyphens because it's, it's annoying having to say hyphen every time. So I apologize if you're not following that. Uh, WP learn update post content, and then WP learn update post as well. So I think that's how I'm specifying things. Yeah, WP learn, WP learn there. Uh, WP learn, WP learn. That's where we are there. And the button is, yeah, they all have the WP learn prefix. So make sure everything has the WP learn free prefix, and then you should be good to go. Um, so let me refresh here. Load post works, clear post works. Um, it's going to post post three, intent three. So the key is to make sure that the fields that you're specifying when you are setting up the ID values. So the ID attributes of your text areas should match the ID attributes that you use when you call get element by ID. Um, and then, then things should start working. Okay, so let's just add three to test that that works. That worked fine. Let us update two to make sure that works. Two, update first two content. Test that. Oh, right, that's because I don't think I have the button firing. So, so Joe, you also need to check and make sure that you have the Did I use the type of stuff in the, in the repository. I think you might have a combination of some new and some old code there. Uh, let me just check in the repository. Yeah, I'm using the if set. It doesn't matter too much. Um, we go back here. Post. Update post button. You know, so there's a typo there as well. We update post button to update post button. So you need to fix that. Uh, and then update post button at against listener. Post update post. And then that should now fix things. Um, but I do recommend maybe doing a a pull of the of the version three code because the way you're doing the checks is not wrong. It's just the old way that I did it in the previous session. Um, so let's just do an update, update post. Let's just refresh this. And let's load. And let's update post two. Post ID dated post two. Yeah, that should be working. So, Joe, how are you doing there? Um, have you got things working? Okay, excellent. I'm going to just switch back my my local environment to the code that I had just so I um, 
same place that we got it. And we're going to switch this back just to go back a few steps. Okay, that's where I want to be. Uh, so there's an update. And there's one in the page. Okay, good. Uh, otherwise, if I don't go back to the code that I'm expecting, I will get lost again. <laughs> okay, so we can add, we can update. Um, moving on to custom fields. Uh, somebody asked me about custom fields in a previous session. Um, so I just want to mention and confirm that when I talk about custom fields, I'm talking specifically about the default WordPress installation, uh, implementation of custom fields. Um, however, if you're using something like advanced custom fields or one of those plugins that, that gives you a user interface to generate custom fields, uh, generally those plugins implement custom fields in the same way as WordPress. So it registers what's known as post meta fields and then it uses the same uh, core function calls. Um, but I'm not using one of those plugins, I'm using the core functionality. So your mileage may vary if you're going to be using a, a plugin like advanced custom fields. You might need to do certain things in the user interface to enable the field for the REST API. Uh, what I'm going to be showing you today is the way I do it in, in code in a plugin um, and how you can interact with it when you're when you're adding or updating things. So for those who don't know, custom fields is a way of storing additional pieces of information on a WordPress post or custom post type. Um, basically, I'm going to show you very quickly in any in any WordPress database, there is a table uh, called posts. Uh, depending, depending on your install, it may or may not have a different prefix to mine, but my prefix is WP posts, and it stores the core data for a post. So it stores the post date, the post content, the post type, the exit status, blah, blah, blah. And those are all the default fields that you can submit to on a REST API endpoint. So when we looked at the schema last week, um, let me open up the schema document. And so we can just refresh ourselves and how that works. So the schema is how you how you submit data to uh sorry, that's not what I want. I the one called posts. The schema for, for example, posts is the fields that you can submit and it can update the fields of the database. Um, and as we mentioned, some of the fields are slightly different to the database fields. The, the most obvious one is the title field that you can send um, in the in the REST API is actually the post title field in the database. So the REST API maps the title field data that you submit to the post title field in the database. Um, however, WordPress also has this concept called post meta. Uh, and these are basically key value pairs that you can add to any post. So you'll see in the post meta field, every post meta record has a post ID. So that's post ID two. Um, for example, we added post ID 55 or something recently. There's nothing there for that, but there might be later. And then there's a key and a value. So these are key value pairs. So when you create a, a custom field or a post meta field, you always are storing it against a key. And then when you need to retrieve that field for a specific post, you pass in the post ID and the key and you can retrieve that field. The key can be used multiple times. So you can have the same key being used on multiple posts. Uh, and so it's that combination of post ID and key that gives you the, the corpus of data. And, and custom fields are often used when you're using a custom post up. For example, you might create a custom post type of an author. And maybe not a good example, but let's just let's just go with it. Well, a book. A book is maybe a good, good example. And on a book custom post type, you have a book title and you have some content about the book. But then you might have things like the ISBN number, um, excuse me, or the, the, the URL that points to the book's website or various additional fields. Um, and traditionally in WordPress, that is what gets used. The post meta fields get used, the custom fields get used um, to store that data. Now, in the editor, depending on which editor you're using, you can view the custom fields in one of two ways. If you're using the block editor, I'm sure I can convert that to blocks very quickly, you click on the three little dots that opens up the options, you go to preferences, you go to panels, and you enable the custom fields panel. Uh, this will reload the editor, and then right at the bottom of the screen, you will see there the custom fields panel sits, um, and you can add new custom fields to the post from this from this interface if you want, and you can remove custom fields, I think. Um, it's been a while since I've done this. Uh, and you'll see there are some, some custom fields already available. The one is related to the fake press plugin that I use. So I can add a fake press flag uh, custom field, and I can add the value. Um, Stefan says by stock WP, I assume you if you're using the classic editor, Stefan.
Oh, no, no, it doesn't need a plugin. It's built into WordPress. Um, the, so the reason that plugins like advanced custom fields exist is because the user interface is very clunky, as you can see. Um, and, and to add new custom fields, you need to write code for it. So that's why plugins exist. But the functionality itself that advanced custom fields used is already built into WordPress. The database is already there by default. WordPress uses it for various other things. And advanced custom fields just falls on top of that and makes it easier to manage those fields. But it is a default core WordPress experience. Um, very quickly, while we're talking about the classic editor, I do have uh, a quick introduction on how that works. If you're using, if you're still using the classic editor, uh, you, uh, I do understand if that's your if that's your pre preference. So I have the Sensei Press uh, site set up, which uses the classic editor. And if you're inside of posts, you can uh, click on the screen options at the top here, and then you can enable the custom fields uh, option there. And enabling that, let me just hide all of this, will again enable the custom fields meta box at the bottom. Um, so that is a default WordPress functionality, uh, and you can add fields, and you can update fields, and you can do various things. Okay, now, to be able to use custom fields via the REST API, you have to register them first, and they have to be registered uh, to be available to the REST API. You cannot create a post and simply pass in a custom field key, uh, and it will create it in WordPress for you. So the first thing that you need to do is somewhere in your plugin or in your theme uh, using that uses PHP, you need to use one of the functions that registers a custom field. And one of the ways that you can do it is you can use the register meta function, uh, which I'm going to open up here on my screen. I'm going to share it with you in the chat. Um, and that basically requires you to pass in the object type. In other words, the, the object that you're registering this piece of meta for. So it could be a post or a comment or term or user. Um, if you have a look at the database, you'll see that uh, posts has a post meta, terms has a term meta, and users has a user meta, uh, and comments has a comment meta. So by default, those four options can all have, have metadata. Um, and then you need to pass in things like the key uh, and any other arguments. Uh, and one of those arguments we need to pass in is the default value. And another argument we need to pass in is whether it's available to the REST API or not. So this is the documentation. You could read through all of this. There's the show in REST field. But I'm very quickly going to show you what that looks like. So if we switch back over to our um, code editor and we go into the PHP file, you can just call this um, in the root of your plugin or theme because this registers the, the custom field for WordPress to use. Uh, so you don't have to hook it into like a, a, an early action hook. You can, if you want, hook it into the init hook or the WP hook if you want to, but you can just pull register meta in the root of your plugin. It won't cause any errors. Um, and then inside of register meta, you need to specify some, some data. So the one piece of data you do need to specify is what post type it's going to be registered to. In our case, we're using post, so I'm just going to register it to post. Um, and then we need to give it the key. Uh, so for our examples today, I'm going to be using a URL key. So we're going to be pasting in a, a URL to a, to a website. So I'm just going to call the key URL. Then we need to add some arguments. And we'll add those arguments as an array, because that's what it expects if you read the documentation. The first argument we're going to pass in is whether single is true or false. Now, if you don't know what that means, is you can store um, metadata either as a single item, like a single string or numeric or whatever, or you can store it as an array of data. I mean, what, what PHP, what WordPress does is serializes that array, uh, which is basically converting it from an array to a, to a special type of string, and you can store that in the database. Uh, that's a topic for another day, uh, which we will get to one day, but not today. But for now, it's just a single string, so I'm, I'm leaving it as a single uh, uh, metadata type. Uh, the next thing we need to do is we need to just give it a type. Uh, so this could be a string, a Boolean, or a numeric, or whatever. I'm just going to go for string because it's just a piece of text. Um, I like to give my uh, my meta fields a default. Um, in this case, the default can be an empty string. So that's just whenever the, the, the metadata is queried. Uh, so when a post is queried, then it'll run a post meta query. And if there's nothing stored for that for that key or that key doesn't exist on the post, then it'll return the default value. So in our case, we can just return an empty string. And then the last thing we need to do is we need to say show in rest uh, and we need to set that to true uh, and basically that means that it will be available to the rest api so that we can push data to it um, if you've never worked with an array in php 
you'll see I'm just using this equals sign and I think it's the less than sign. So it basically creates an arrow, a special type of arrow in PHP, um, which will which will set up the array for us. Um, so that's what the code looks like. I'm going to paste this into the chat if you would like to copy it into your own code, or if you if you've missed anything, you should compare it to what you got. But that's essentially going to register the, the, the URL meta key in the code. And effectively, because we put it in the root of the plugin, whenever WordPress code execution loads, either in the dashboard or in the front end, it loads any active plugin code. And this means doing it this way, it will load the key into memory to be available for pushing and pulling posts and various other things. Um, it doesn't actually create anything in the database yet, but then when we push data to that meta key with the key of URL, it'll be registered and WordPress will then know what to do with that piece of information. So this is a requirement. When I first started um, working with custom fields in the REST API, I thought I could just get away with uh, the way we used to do it in PHP, which you can just run um, update meta key with a key and a value and it'll just create it if it's not there. You can't do that with the REST API. You have to register it so it's available to the REST API so that you can push data to it. Okay. I'm going to pause again if there are any questions around that. Otherwise, we're going to move on to updating and adding some custom fields to our phones. I don't seem to have any questions, so I think we can move on. So with that in mind, I'm going to scroll down to my forms, and I'm going to add a field for the URL. And I'm just going to copy the um, post title field. And I'm going to pop it under the post content. And then it's going to be WP Learn post URL. And you can say post URL here. And again, the ID is WP Learn post URL. And the placeholder can just be URL. And then I'm going to do the same thing for my update post form. So I'm going to grab the ID field just because it's a text. Actually, let's grab the title field. It's easier to replace title with URL. We'll pop that underneath the content. And then we'll just go URL. URL, URL, <laughs> and again, URL. So now I've got a title, a content, and a URL a form field, so I can, I can capture that data. Then in my JavaScript code, so let's go and have a look at the documentation and see what the documentation tells us about the ability to add post meta to a REST API request. And if we scroll down on the schema uh, page here, uh, you'll see there is a meta property that we can, um, I'll answer that for you in a second, Stefan. Um, there is a meta property that we can push data to, and we will see that it is an object. So what that means is when we pass in the metadata, we need to create a new object and then pass in the meta key with the value. Um, Stefan, to answer your question about what the meta is used for, it depends on the requirement. Uh, so it depends on how you're setting up the site. Um, in the default instance of WordPress, if you don't, if you're not using it, you'll see it stores things like the edit lock if someone's editing a post or a, a trash status or various other things that WordPress uses by default. Um, but in, in, in sort of custom development terms, folks generally use it for adding custom data to a post. So if they can't use the title or the content for what they're doing, they want to add additional fields, they generally use the post meta for that. Okay. Um, where was I? That was the original question. Okay. No, I wasn't. I was reading documentation. It's interesting. <laughs> um, so when we when we capture the meta value from the form field, how we pass it to the post model is slightly different. So let me show you what that what that looks like. So I'm just going to grab the um, this, the create field, which is WP Learn Post URL. And in my, I'm going to scroll up to my submit post function. I'm going to add a new line to capture the URL into a variable. And I'll just be document get element by ID. Um, and we said, what was it? Was WP, did I copy that? Did I copy that? Yes, I did. WP hyphen learn hyphen post URL value. So that'll grab whatever I put into that form. And then here in the data object, or at least the object that I'm that I'm sending to to the model, I'm just format this a little bit better so it's easier to read. Uh, it doesn't really matter in terms of code; it's more about readability. Um, I can now pass in a meta property, and that needs to be an object. So I open up the curly braces to define a new object, 
And then I pass in the meta key that I specified in the PHP code, which in this case is URL. And then I pass in the value that I want to save as that URL. So in this case, it's going to be the constant that we've set up. I'm going to need a comma after my published property, and that should be good to go. I should be able to do the same thing on the on the update post. So if we scroll down here, ID title comment status update. Sorry, status. I'm going to pop in the meta there as well. I'm going to put in a comma there as well. So that should enable the URL to be posted when we do the update. Okay, so that's the only change that I need to make. And the only difference there is, as you can see, if it's a, a top level field, it's generally property and value. If it's meta, I need to create the meta object, and then I can have multiple meta fields. So if I've registered multiple custom fields or meta fields in the PHP, I can then list them. So let's say if I had a URL and let's add ISBN one as well um, for a book, then I could pass in the ISBN in that object. But for now, we're just going to work with the single URL. So let's see if that works. So let us load our posts. I first I need to refresh my page <laughs> and then load my posts. Okay, there are all my posts. So let's create post number four and give it some content. And then for the purposes of an example, I'm just going to use the domain.com example for a string. And I'm going to add that. So that's created the post. Okay, let's see if it's worked. So if I go over to my post list and I find post four, there it is with the content. And there is the URL custom field, and there is the domain. So it's posted that through. Let's test the update. So if I take post four, which is 160, and post ID, and let's say um, updated post four, I think it was. Yes, post four, and updated post four content. And now I'm going to change the URL from domain.com to example.com, and I'm going to hit update. Okay, URL is not defined. Interesting. So I've got a bug in my code somewhere. Uh, it's on line 60. I think it's because I haven't specified the constant. Yes, that's what I forgot to do. I forgot to specify the constant, which pulls the data from the relevant form field. So let's add that in the update, update post function. And then I need to remember it's WP Learn update post URL. So WP Learn update post URL. There we go. And, um, so let's refresh and check that out. So we can refresh, get the post. Okay, post four is 160. So we pass in post ID, we got updated post four, updated post four content. And this time the example, the URL is example.com. And that's updated. So let's verify that by refreshing the actual post. And there we go. I didn't even, I didn't spot example.com wrong, but you can see the updates happens. The title's updated, the content's updated, and the example is updated. Um, so that's how you can, if you're working with custom fields and they're enabled in the REST API, that's how you can submit them to your API requests uh, to be able to push the data to the first meeting. Okay, we'll take another break if there are any questions around all of that. Uh, and then we will move on to um, some basic authentication of the REST API. Uh, if you want to test the authentication with me and you haven't already got Postman installed, please do that. I'm actually going to do that now because I don't have it installed on my system. So if you have any questions, go ahead and ask them. But otherwise, I'm going to hop on over to my desktop and find the Postman download over here. Uh, and on a Mac, it, 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 it sort of adds it to your, your home screen there. So I'm just going to run that. Um, and I'm going to say yes, and I'm going to open. Yes, I want to do it to the applications folder. Um, and then I should get Postman opening up. There it is. And you should see something like this. Uh, you, actually, you shouldn't see something like this because <laughs> um, I one of the things that I like about Postman, so what you're seeing here is the fact that Postman will save your workspaces to the cloud somewhere for you, and then you can get them later on. But what you should see is something more like this with empty workspaces, and this should be empty. Mine's clear currently. Um, but it will be something along these lines. See, there's some questions, so I'm going to answer those quickly. Uh, Jose says, good morning. Will there be a recording available for the session? Yes, there will be, as Stefan has pointed out on WordPress TV, uh, usually posted during the course of the day tomorrow, uh, Friday. Um, tomorrow is Friday, yes. <laughs> and uh, I, then link, I then link the WordPress TV um, link in the Meetup uh, comments. 
However, if you if you if you don't see that, why is Brave not loading for me? Because Postman's a good right? If you don't see that, you could also just go to WordPress TV and search for Let's Code. Uh, because there is a tag, WordPress TV uses WordPress as it should, and there is a Let's Code tag. And if you search for everything by Let's, Let's Code, you'll see there's a tag there, Let's Code series. You can tick that and go newest, and it'll be the one right at the top. Um, and then you can see all the others uh, from there as well. Okay. I need, I think that's water. Maybe coffee, maybe water. All right. So if you've got Postman along, set up and running, uh, if you don't, not to worry, I'll, I'll show you how it works in a second. But we're going to talk about authentication. Uh, with the REST API. Now, depending on your use case, will determine your your choice of authentication options. Um, as I mentioned earlier, if you're if you're building something for the dashboard, so those some of you might have might have seen that the Yoast plugin uh, released a new updated dashboard recently, and I think it might be using the REST API. Uh, you don't need to worry about authentication because it's in the dashboard. And the users are already authenticated using the cookie based authentication which effectively is storing something in your browser to say this user is logged in. So it all just works. You don't have to worry about authentication. That's if you're using the REST API uh, and the backbone JS client. If you're using, if you're writing, if you're building blocks and you're using the WordPress API fetch package, that also doesn't require authentication for the same reasons. Uh, if you're just fetching a list of posts or post types, that actually doesn't require any authentication. You can do that from from outside because that data is public anyway, unless you've turned it off. Um, but if you need to create posts or create content, you do need to be authenticated. There are a couple of ways that you can do authentication. Now, if we think about using JavaScript and the REST API, any JavaScript code that you run or that you code, unlike PHP code, um, is going to be visible wherever you're running that code because JavaScript gets loaded in the HTML and you can see that code. So if you're storing your API authentication username and password in your JavaScript file, that's a bad thing, <laughs> okay? So if you're building a, a SPA, a single page application, uh, or if you're building something for the web and you want, to, you want it to talk to and push data to WordPress uh, instances, then storing your usernames and passwords in JavaScript is not great. So there are a couple of options available for that. I'm not gonna dive into those today because they are quite in-depth topics and maybe we'll cover them one day. The one imp implementation is using something called OAuth. Uh, and the way OAuth works is the application makes a request to your WordPress site. Your WordPress site then returns a callback URL to that application, says, yes, I authenticate you and returns a token and then uses that token and that token is stored in memory somewhere to make additional requests. So that's one way of handling it. Um, the other way of doing it is using something called JSON Web Tokens. This is a fairly new way of doing things. Uh, these are all plugin-based solutions. So you install the plugin on your WordPress site, and then you can implement these options. Um, I haven't dived into uh, JSON Web Tokens yet. I'm, I'm probably going to be planning a series of workshops specifically on each one of these options in the future. Maybe not in the near future, but somewhere down the line. Um, so that we can understand how they work and what the pros and cons are. So they might do a series on each one. Um, but built into WordPress, there is a way that you can authenticate a user from outside of your WordPress instance and allow them to do this. Uh, and that is known as uh, application passwords. Now, application passwords was a plugin uh, developed by George Stefanos, who is a colleague of mine at Automatic. He works on the Jetpack team. It has now been merged into WordPress core. And there is a full integra integration guide, which I'm going to share with you in the chat if you want to read it later, that shows you how to set it up, how to use it, and then how to interact with it in the code. Um, and essentially what this does is this generates an application-specific password for your user. And then when you make requests to the REST API, you pass your username and your password to those requests to authenticate that request. And then, you and then if it's authenticated, you return the data. So this is somewhere where this is perfect for something like building a mobile app where you can store that data securely on the, on the phone. You can encrypt it, store it securely, and then unencrypt it when you need it. Um, and it's not being it's not stored on the phone in any way that somebody can access it uh, if, if they do get hold of it. So that, that's good for something like that. It's also, it's, it's again, it's not great for building SPAs or, or web applications that are connected to a WordPress site, uh, but it's perfect for like a mobile app scenario or an application that you control 
uh, in some way. So the cool thing about it is create an application password is really easy. Um, before I show you how to do that though, I want to switch back to Postman so I can show you how to test your API endpoints because the, what we're gonna do is we're gonna test the get endpoint of the, of the post request, and then we're gonna test posting, um, creating a post using a post uh, method. And to do that, we will need to authenticate. So we will go through that authentication process when we do that. Uh, so I'm gonna jump around a little bit, so hopefully you can, you can just bear with me on this. Um, so let's go back to Postman. So Postman, as I said, is this way of testing your API requests. It's a great application. It can be used for testing more than just REST API requests. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can test SOAP environments, you can just X, uh, XML RPC environments. I use it for REST API testing uh, because it's just the easiest tool to use for it. When you get started, it's a good idea to hit the Create Collection button uh, and then collect all your requests for a specific project in one collection. As I mentioned, Postman syncs these. If you create an account with a free account with Postman, your, your um, collections will be synced. I think there's a limit on how many collections you can have. I generally only have one or two collections at any one time because I'm working on one project at a time. So I'm going to create this new collection and call it WordPress because that's just the name of my site. Um, and then inside of your collection, you can create requests. So I'm going to add a request here. You'll see by default when a request is created, it is a GET request. Uh, so I, what I like to do is I like to name my request based on the method uh, and based on the resource that I'm fetching. So I'm going to GET posts. So that's what I call it. It just makes it easier for me to see what I'm working with. It names it on the side there. Um, I just want to see if I can zoom in a little bit here so that folks can see this in person. Yeah, no, that's in person. There we go. Um, and then I can input the request URL. Now, in our case, I want to work with the post endpoint. Um, and if you don't know what the post endpoint is, I'm going to show you very quickly. It's whatever your, where is my site? Oh, I lost it now. There we go, learn post. It's whatever your site's URL is, so local or, or online or whatever. And then it's uh, wp-json slash wpv2. Uh, so in my case, it's learnpress.test. I'm going to copy this into the link. Um, so it's whatever your domain is. I'm just going to take out the domain part so that you can change it for yourselves. So it's whatever your domain is. And then wp-json wpv2. And then just the name of the route, which in this case is posts. So let me see if I can edit that a bit better. I can't, okay, anyway, I'll just do it like that. So this is my post um, route. And if I, if, I, if I access the get endpoint by making a get request, I will return all the posts. If I access the post endpoint by pushing a post request with some data, I should be able to create a post. So let's copy out this URL and pop it into our postman request URL area. Here we go. And that's all we need to do. Create the get request, add the URL, you can then hit save to save it, and save it to your collection. And then when you want to do a test, you can hit send. Uh, and that will then make a request to your, to your site. You'll see it there at the bottom. Uh, and what's nice is it, it, it gives you the response nicely cleaned up. You can view the raw response if you want to, um, but you can also, by default, to the pretty option, the clean option. So you can read through and you can see how all this works. Okay. Now we want to create a post. So I'm going to go through the process of setting up the request in Postman first so that you can see the errors that happen. So I'm going to create a new request, um, which I can do by clicking on the three options here and say, where is it? Add request, there it is, add request. And I'm going to say post, post. And I'm going to change this to a post method but I'm using the same route. If you remember from an earlier session we did a couple of weeks ago, the, the route is the URL. And when you, when you access that route with a specific method, that's the endpoint. So this is the post endpoint for the post's route. <laughs> Again, duplication of terms. Um, and if I hit send on this one, you'll see that the response I get is, sorry, you are not allowed to create posts as this user. And this is because I'm not authenticated. So I need to find one of the authentication methods and authenticate this request. So this is a great way of testing whether your authentication works by using Postman outside of your WordPress instance. So what I can do now is I can switch back to my WordPress install and I can go to my user. Now this is, what I like about this is it's user specific. So if the user isn't on the site with the right privileges, they can't access. So I'm gonna go into my admin user for my site 
And right at the bottom of the user interface, there's an application passwords area. And you'll see it says application passwords allow authentication via non-interactive systems, such as XML RPC and the REST API. So what this means is I'm creating a different password for my user specific to the REST API, not my user password for the dashboard. So if somebody should get hold of this, all they can do effectively is create posts. They can't access my dashboard. Um, so I can then log in and I can change passwords and revoke passwords and stop that access from happening, which is what I like about it. Um, so you could, if you wanted to, put it on a website somewhere. Uh, and the worst that could happen is that somebody could create whatever content you allow them to create. Not the most secure way, but at least better than just giving out your username and password. Um, so what I like to do is I like to give my password a name based on the application that's accessing it, in this case, the REST API, specifically Postman. Uh, and then I just say, add new application password. And here it gives me the password. It says your new application password for WP REST API Postman is this. And it says, be sure to save this in a safe location because you will not retrieve it. So I'm not gonna be able to get this back later, which I like. And then you'll see at the bottom of the list is the option to revoke this password. So should this password get leaked somewhere, I can just hit revoke, it removes the password, and all access is shut down. Okay, so that is my password. Let's see how we can test this in Postman. So let me just make sure I've copied this into the browser. In fact, I'm gonna stick it. You can't access my local environment, so I'm gonna stick it in the notes just to save it from this one. Um, I'm gonna switch back to Postman. And the way we do authentication in Postman is there is an authorization area. And the type of authorization is basic auth. Now, in a future session, I'm planning on showing you how to do this in a REST API request. We'll probably do like a React app or something that's separate from the WordPress dashboard, and I'll show you how to pass that data. But for now, we're just going to do this. And then it's literally just a case of using the username, the same username from the WordPress site, but then passing in your password. So in this case, it's the password that I just copy pasted. You can also click show password to make sure it's the right password. Yes, it's the right password. And now when I create, try and create a post, I'm gonna save this and hit send, I get a different message and it says empty content. So what that tells me is my, my request is authenticated, but I'm not sending any data, which makes sense because I'm not, I'm not passing in type of content and those kind of things. And it actually says here, type of content and excerpt are empty. Uh, you don't actually need excerpt, you just need title and content. So how do we do that in Postman? So the way we do that with the REST API is we click on the body tag in the request and we click on the raw option. So it's raw data, but instead of text data, we wanna click on this drop down and switch to JSON because we're passing JSON data. That's how REST API works, it uses JSON data. And then if you remember looking at our JavaScript code, uh, no, I can't get Visual Studio's come up. Um, it's effectively this kind of content. So using JSON, so the open close brackets and then passing in properties and values. The only difference is in JavaScript, you don't need to use any quotes because it's JavaScript code, not JSON code. So it takes the JavaScript code and converts it to JSON when it creates the request. Uh, when you're doing it in raw JSON, you do need to wrap your properties and your values in double quotes. So I'm gonna copy and paste this example in the chat just because it's easier than typing out because we're running out a little bit out of time. Uh, so it's going to look a little something like that. And I will paste it up here as well so you can see it. So I open and close the curly braces, and then I pass in the title property in quotes, colon, and then the value in double quotes. That's a JSON format that I need to pass using double quotes. You'll see that if I actually, what's nice about Postman, if I use single quotes, it actually gives me a little squiggly, red squiggly line that says, well, there's an area. Here. Um, and if I click on it and ho hover over it, it actually says unexpected in the string because I'm using a single quote. And if I change this one to single quotes as well, it says, oh, I don't like that value expected. And it starts giving me errors. So it's because I'm not using double quotes. Um, other than that, content is the same, status is the same, meta is the same, passing in an object, URL, postman.com, all of that is exactly the same. So this is what your body looks like. So authorization is basic auth, username and application passwords specifically. This is another cool thing. If somebody accesses my postman requests that I've saved to the cloud, I can just revoke that, that application password. Um, so this is a great thing to use when testing API requests. And then in the body, you click on raw, switch that to JSON, and then pass in your JSON object of your data. And now if we save this and we hit send, there we go. It's created the request for us. There is the slug, the publish, the title, all of those things are done. Let's validate that this is real. It's actually been created. Um, and funny side note, when I, was, when I was preparing for this workshop, I discovered that my WordPress site that I was working on 
was not connected to the right database. It was actually storing things in the wrong place. So I had to refresh my entire site. Um, but if we go to the post table, there is my postman post. There is the content. There is the URL. It's all working. So every single one of these requests, creation, updation, updating, updation, updating, deleting, um, listing, you could do all of that from Postman. It's a great way to test your API endpoints. When you are creating custom endpoints, which we'll do, we definitely will do in a future session, it's a great way to test those as well before writing a bunch of JavaScript code. Make sure it does what you expect it to do. Make sure you can pass the right data, you can retrieve the right data. Um, if you're working with a REST API or any REST API in any way, I highly recommend trying out Postman. It's a very cool, cool tool to use. Okay, that is my bit for today. Um, I hope that you have enjoyed that. Are there any questions before we wrap up? Um, because otherwise I think we can we can call it a day. There don't seem to be any questions. Um, hopefully I haven't like bombarded you with lots of information. Um, in a future session, we're going to be looking at creating custom endpoints. So endpoints that aren't specific to data. We're going to be, um, Fahad said the auth used is only the basic one. Fahad, do you mean in this example or just in general? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure what you mean. Wow, Stefan, that's early. Um, I, I appreciate it. In this one, yes, I'm just using basic auth now. Um, I'm, going, I'm planning um, separate sessions on how one could use OAuth, how one can use um, so Jose says, are there videos for OAuth 2? Um, so I haven't found any good videos out there for using OAuth 2 yet, which is why I'm planning on. Um, OAuth 2 is, in, in my experience as a developer, it's one of those things that it's kind of like the, the joke, in, well, not the joke, but the line from the matrix, you have to experience it for yourself. Um, so one of my goals this year is to actually do a, a, a tutorial um, and, and a workshop on just focusing on OAuth 2 and how you would set that up and how it would work. Um, or off one or whatever the options are. Um, the, the, to give you an idea, the plan is I'm going to be continuing down for the next few weeks at least on using the Backbone JS client and the sort of default authentication. So you're building something that works in the dashboard. And then somebody gave me an idea on, on, on social media recently um, to say what would be really interesting to see how you would do the same thing using React. So in other words, maybe building something that is separate from your WordPress site that needs to be able to authenticate. Um, so when we do that, then I will probably look at the authentication methods and during the course of those series. Now, when that's going to happen, I can't say um, because, because um, it all just depends on the information that people are looking for um, and, and that kind of thing. So, so when that's going to happen, I can't say. Unfortunately, there's only me. If there are any developers out there watching this, who want, to, who want to join me in the training team and join me in making these workshops and videos, please do reach out because I've got loads of ideas and there's just one of me. Um, but uh, in, the dashboard, in, the, in the dashboard in the background, no, no, if you're asking about React, what I mean is um, actually building it separately from the dashboard. Um, Fahad says, I'm in, I'm a WordPress dev. Awesome. Fahad, if you are keen, um, please go to the make WordPress.org training site, which is the training team site. Um, in the welcome box, there's information on how to join the team, how to join us in Slack. Um, you're welcome to join and help me make this content. I would love to get more of me out there. Um, so, so let me know. Um, Sergio says, I've been interacting with API, creating custom post types with PHP script related. Yes, pretty good. So you can use the HTTP API for that. Um, so yeah, there's all, there's all kinds of ways of doing this. Um, but at the moment, I'm focusing on the REST API because I see a lot of folks talking about how to use the REST API, how to authenticate with the REST API. So I'm going to be focused on that for probably probably a few more weeks. The other plan I have is uh, with, with WordPress, I think it's 6.2 coming out soon. There's going to be some content around that I'm going to have to create. So I'm going to have to take a break from REST API things and focus on that for a bit. Uh, but yes, I do plan on getting there. I do plan on setting up tutorials and workshops on this so that there's, there's information around how that works. Um, cool. Right, that's my bit. So thank you all for joining me. Uh, if there are any follow-up questions that you might have, please do post them on that GitHub issue, which I will find and share with you now, um, because I do gather those thoughts in my notes for future sessions. Um, so, so if you have ideas of things you would like to see covered, please do let me know and I'll do my best to cover them. Thank you all for joining me. Uh, I will do my best the next week to not have any bugs in my code uh, that you have to clean up. 
Uh, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I will see you all next week.